and to see the growth, you know, that's happened. Because I know we could also go around and just say the impact and the difference of where you are today as opposed to 14 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, you know, praise God, how powerful the word is, right? Praise God. Well, I um, gave Brad a song that I um, asked for him to play tonight, so we're going to play that, and then we'll just get into the word. Praise God. Thank you.
bless you. We are so grateful. The lamb, hallelujah, that was sent for us. Father, that you looked ahead and you saw us and you gave Jesus. And Father, we love you because you first loved us. Thank you for washing us clean. Hallelujah. You know, just as the prophet Isaiah said, let's settle the matter. Your sins were once red as scarlet, but they are now white as snow. <laughs> oh, Lord, you are so good. You are so good. Father, we thank you that your goodness and your mercy are towards us all the time. And when we wake up every morning, your mercy is brand new again to us, Lord. Oh, how good you are. Father, we're so grateful and we thank you tonight for your word that, Lord, as it goes forth, there's an anointing and a power upon your word. And, Father, I pray for your word to go to work in every heart that's here. Father, you know the root of every matter and every situation, and you're the answer. <laughs> you're the answer. So, Lord, we thank you for revelation knowledge to freely flow in this place. Father, as I minister, I do it with the ability that you give, Lord. I avail myself to you. I ask you to think through me and speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Okay, so we, we praise the Lord. We got more ladies here, and y'all missed the name call out. <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, praise God. I'll get you guys afterwards. <laughs> hallelujah. You can be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Well, you know, I still had so much word from the ladies' retreat that we just got back from. Glory to God. Because, you know, we talked about um, Mark, right? Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to those that believe. Well, that's, I'm, I'm, we may go into a little bit of that. I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to, to just minister tonight. But we're going to continue talking about building our life God's way. That's what the Lord has given me for this year is, is for us to learn how to build our life God's way. And of course, it's based on Proverbs 14, 1, a wise woman builds her house. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but it's the foolish one that plucks it down with her own hands. And so we all want to build healthy, productive lives. And that's just not our family and our household, but it's even our house, the temple of the Holy Ghost, who we are. So it's us. It's our homes, it's our families, it's those around us. We, we want to learn how to build it wisely, right? Praise God, hallelujah. And there is wisdom in God's word, really, to teach us how to build our lives. Glory to God. But you have to make the decision to yield to that wisdom, right? You won't live what you don't know. You won't live what you don't know. If you don't know that you can live life by faith and you never learn how to live a life of faith, then the circumstances and the obstacles of life will overwhelm you. But when you begin to learn and delve into the word and find out that there is a way of faith and that you can live by faith, praise God, you'll walk in that, praise God. You'll never go where you can't see. You'll never go where you can't see. The awesome thing about God's word is we've talked about this many times. Words paint pictures. And God has given us this entire Bible that paints pictures for us so that we can get the accurate pictures, right, on the canvas of our heart. And as you begin to get those accurate pictures, you'll begin to walk in things that you now see because faith sees. See, the awesome thing about faith is faith is like radar. It sees through the storm. Praise God. Charles Capp shared this testimony years ago, and he, he, Charles Capps was a pilot also. He wasn't only a minister. He was a farmer, he was a pilot, and he was a minister of the gospel. And so he was uh, flying, he, he shared this, he was flying, and he started to turn the nose of his airplane into this really dark black weather. It looked really bad. And his radar was broken. He had no, no radar with his avionics on the airplane. And so he had to call into the tower and say, listen, I'm getting ready to turn 
you know, into this weather I'm seeing here. I need to know, you know, should I do that? Should I go? So the tower comes back to him and he says, yep. He says in about, uh, what he said in about four, the tower says to him in about four miles, you'll have complete sunshine, right? And he's like, he had to go by what the tower said, right? Because what he's seeing is complete black, dark, bad weather, and he's turning the airplane into it, and he's got nothing that tells him anything different, nothing that's working in front of him that he can look at that tells him anything different other than what the tower said to him, right? And so the tower had said to him, no, stay on course. In about four miles, you'll be in complete sunshine, right? He said in about two minutes, it was complete sun. Praise the Lord. And that's what our faith is. Our faith is like radar. It sees through the storm. Praise God. But if we never delve into the word and begin to find out about the life of faith, we'll never walk in that. Glory to God. And, and as you do, you begin to see things by faith that you didn't even know were possible. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word is good. Glory to God. And your success is found in your daily routine. It's important for us to know that your success is found in your daily routine. Glory to God. Hebrews 11.3, it says this, By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay? Now, this is an important foundation for you to get a hold of in the life of faith because I use this illustration at the, um, the, at the women's retreat, right? And I didn't go out and buy a chocolate cake. I didn't do it at the ladies' retreat. I didn't buy a chocolate cake now. But if I had a chocolate cake, right, sitting up here, that chocolate cake is made of things that do not appear because it takes water to mix in the recipe, right, to make the chocolate cake. But before the hydrogen and oxygen got together, right, you couldn't see anything, praise God. And so that's exactly how faith works, right? That's how God made everything. The things that we see were made of things which do not appear, glory to God. And see, the thing is, is <laughs> living in the world, we try to fall under um, circumstantial perception, thinking that our circumstances are meant to frame our lives. And your circumstances were never meant to frame your life. Glory to God. God has given us the power to be change agents. Hallelujah. And tonight, there's two specific things I'm going to talk to us about. One is being well advised, and the other one is fashioning your shield. We're going to talk about those two things tonight. Praise God. What you say and do about your situation, whatever situation, is going to be governed by what you believe. What you say and do in your particular situation is going to be governed by what you believe. So, again, it's important what we believe. So circumstances were never meant to frame your life. You hear people say things like this. Well, you know, I was born into this family, and this is just my lot in life. And, well, I have this physical condition or this addiction, or I suffer from, you know, this mental disorder because, you know, my mom did and my aunt did and my grandmother did. Or, you know, they'll say something like, you just don't understand what's happened to me in life. And because of that, I'm depressed or I'm angry or I'm fearful, right? And, and let me just say, I am not belittling any circumstance that's happened to any person in the room in life, because the Bible clearly tells us in the world you'll have tribulation, right? But it also tells us, be of good cheer, for there's one that has overcome the world. It's deprived it of its power to harm us, praise God. And so what I am doing <laughs> is delivering you from the deception of thinking that things can never change. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because, again, we, uh, you know, we learned at the ladies' retreat, all things are possible to those who believe. Praise God. And when you face the situations of life, what you believe, what you, what you say and do in the middle of that situation is going to be governed by what you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so realize that the world offers this conformity, Right? Because again, I said circumstances were never meant to frame your life, right? God has given us the ability to be change agents, and we were given the power to frame our lives. Glory to God. And so this conformity, see, you need to understand the world offers this sinful, cheap joy at the buyer's expense, but God dispenses fullness of joy at the expense of his own son so that we can live an abundant life. Praise God. 
But there is a conformity that the world offers, and it's very easy to slip into that conformity. And that's why we know Romans 12 too, right? Be ye not conformed to this world, fashioned to, adapted to its superficial customs, right? The Amplify says, right? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? Proving that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. There is a transformation that happens when we begin to change our mind. When you change your mind, you change your choices, and that changes everything. When you change your mind, you change your choices, and that begins to change everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Many times for change to happen, right, there's things that we need to change. (laughs) I mean, it could be habits, right? It could be what's comfortable. It's very easy to settle in to what's comfortable and just stay there, right? It could be your friends, right? See, because the challenge with change a lot of times is change itself. <laughs> and, and people are comfortable not changing, right? And so to yield to God's wisdom, see, when you don't yield to God's wisdom, you're saying that you, you got all the answers and your way is best, right? But God resists the proud, right? And he gives help to the humble, right? Right? And so really humility, all it is, is saying, God, you know best. (laughs) You know best. You know better than I. And you're my radar in the storm. You can see what I can't see. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He sees what we cannot see. Glory to God. But if you'll tap into him with the eye of faith, praise God, and trust in him, he'll show you what you don't know. He said, I will show you even things to come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And these mysteries of the kingdom, it says, are laid up for us. He hasn't kept them from us. They're laid up for us. It's for us to know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. So habits, being comfortable in a comfort zone, right? Even your friends, I said. Now, that's important. Proverbs 13, 20, it says this. He that walks with wise men will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Right? And so again, remember I, I, I said this probably, I think, a couple of, of meetings we had ago, you know. Yes, Jesus ministered to the multitudes. He ate with sinners, you know. He, 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 he shared the gospel everywhere he went. But his company was the 12. And so that's important for us because iron sharpens iron. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so it says that a companion of fools will be destroyed. Remember that the flesh loves nothing to be required of it. The flesh loves nothing to be required of it, right? Philippians 3, right? Paul in Philippians 3, let's go ahead and go, well, he's got it up there. Not as though I had already attained. And what Paul's saying here is I haven't, I'm not perfect. I haven't attained perfection is what Paul's saying here. Not as though I had already attained either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus. Ooh, that right there, there's so much in that right there. (laughs) Jesus came after you. Hallelujah. He apprehended you When he was on the cross, it wasn't the nails that held him there. It was his love for you. It says he looked ahead and he saw you. For the love that was set before him, he endured the cross. That's what it says. For the love, you were set before him. And he he apprehended, he went after you. Hallelujah. And he says, for that very thing, even though I haven't attained perfection, just because I know that Jesus came after me, he was after me, right? Next verse, 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus. Paul was saying he had not attained perfection, but he was pressing to lay hold of what Jesus did for him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, That's our part. The press is our part. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you guys remember this quote? And this was a couple ladies' meetings. C.S. Lewis said this. He said this. When you keep your face towards the sun and you keep walking, the shadows will always fall behind you. But if you stop and turn around, your shadows will always be in your future. Say it again because I want you to get it. When you keep your face towards the sun and you keep walking, the shadows will always fall behind you. But if you stop and you turn around, your shadows will always be in your future. See, there's a temptation 
to go back to what you know. But if you always do what you've always done, expecting a different result, that's the definition of insanity. <laughs> And that's what a lot of people do is they get stuck in a cycle. They get stuck in circumstances and they wonder why they keep going around and around this mountain. But again, I said you change your mind, you change your choices. If you never change your thoughts about it, remember what pastor said, if you don't want to go there, stop thinking about it. Right? right? Hallelujah. And if you want to go there, start thinking about it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so there is that temptation to go back to what you know. Glory to God. I mean, this, we saw this clearly with the Israelites, right? 400 years of bondage, right? In slavery. And they're free. They're free. They're with Moses, and literally they're free. But they made a choice to turn around and go back to what they know, that what they knew, right? Said it, I mean, they literally said it. At the Red Sea there, they're like, Moses, it would have been better if we would have stayed in bondage than be here now. Are you kidding me? But that's exactly, see, that's how deception works. Dece people that are deceived don't know they're the deceived. And that's what I said, that's what that comfortable and that conformity will do. And so bondage, in bondage 400 years thinking we, sh we, we should have just stayed there. <laughs> no. No, God had a promised land for them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, but, and, and it says that they turned back, right? And it says when they did that, they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited God. It doesn't say God is limited. We know God's unlimited, right? He's omniscient. He's omnipresent, right? He's, 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 um, he's almighty. He's all of those things, right? And so, but they're turning back. They're going back to what they thought was more comfortable, what they were comfortable in, and it limited God. It limited God. See, when we were at the, when I was studying for, for the message at the, the ladies' retreat, what came up in my spirit, just as I'm, as I'm talking to God about it and everything, is that really the boundaries of what's possible lie within us. And Thursday night, I was ministering that to the women. The boundaries of what's possible lie within us. <laughs> Hallelujah it's not with him and so that's why there's the guarding of our heart and pastor even brought some of this up that's why proverbs 4 right 423 right yes guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life and it's talking about the border see if we don't guard our heart and we just let our heart be a garbage dump which is exactly what the enemy wants to do get our heart to be his dumping ground, right? And, and, and have the enemy set up borders that God never created for us. And that's what happens, is life happens, right? And what life does to us is try to create borders in our lives, thinking that, you know, this is just the way it is, this is the way it will always be, this is the only way I see that's possible for me. But God never put those borders there, Right? The borders of what's possible lie within us, and he's given us, a, he's given us the power and the ability to be change agents, and we're going to look at how that happens tonight, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so not to turn back, that temptation to turn back, right? Because out of your heart comes the response to every situation you will ever face in life. Out of your heart comes the response to every situation you will face in life. And we can either live in react mode or we can do as pastor's been teaching us, right? John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. We can learn to live in a place of, res of responding. Responding. But that responding is going to come out of your heart. Out of your heart is going to come the response to every situation that you will ever face in life. Glory to God. Romans chapter 10, verse 8, right? It says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith, right? which we preach. See, this is such an important principle for us because words register. We're, you know the old adage, you know, sticks and stones may make my bones, right? But words will never hurt me. <laughs> Baloney. That's so not true. So not true. There has been words that have been spoken, hurtful, hard, harsh, critical, mean, evil words that have been spoken over people's lives. And because they have allowed those words to register on their hearts, it has affected the destiny of multitudes of people. 
because they've taken those words in. They've allowed them to register in their heart. That's the power of words. Hallelujah. Words hurt. They do hurt. But words are powerful. God has given us a whole new way to operate, praise the Lord, because we can take the words that he's given us, plant them on the soil of our heart, and allow those to grow and go where we never thought we would go, live a life that we never even thought possible. I don't know, is Roxana in here? Roxana is in here. I remember when Roxana came out of the world and first started, so I'm putting you on the spot, and, um, and first started coming to the church, right? Her, and it just ministered and blessed me so much because her response was, I never knew this kind of peace was possible. Like I never even thought, like it had never even entered her mind. Like she had been living in the world, and remember I said there's a conformity in the world, right? And she'd been living in the world, and so what happens is when you live in the world and you think like the world, the world becomes your limit, right? And so she came out of the world, and she began to get a transformation in her mind. And so as she began to allow her mind to be transformed by what God says about her and, 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 and for her and with her and all the things that God says in his word to us, hallelujah, she said, I, I, I didn't even think this was possible. I didn't think this kind of peace was possible. Oh. We got to show that to the world. They should be looking into our lives and thinking, man, I see it on you, right? The goodness of God. The Bible says the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the word is, it's, it's in your mouth. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart, right? This is a principle. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. What happens is, we first begin to get the word in our heart by getting it in our mouth. See, there's a connection between your mouth and your heart. And the thing is, is your tongue is attached to your heart, right? And so it's this complete cycle that happens because you begin to get the word and you begin speaking the word and declaring the word and, and getting the promises of God and they begin registering in your heart, and it begins growing. And what happens is your tongue is attached to your heart, right? It's attached to the contents of your heart. And so when circumstances happen, your tongue reaches down to the contents of your heart, and it speaks out of the contents that are down in the heart. And it either leads you to life or it leads you to death. Praise the Lord. And so that's the power of God's word when it gets in our heart. And what happens is it's in our mouth first, then in our heart, and that's where it begins to become effective. Hallelujah. Meditating on it long enough to allow it to get from here to here. Because that's what happens. It, really, it does. It starts out as, as, as a mental thing. But as you do it, it's a process, and it begins to get down and register in your heart. Pray, and it begins to grow bigger and bigger and bigger on the inside of you. Praise God, the power of his word. Hallelujah. Now, in Ephesians 6, we're going to go ahead and read through all of 10 through 16 just because I want to paint a picture for you. But this is talking about when the battle of life happens, there was one thing above everything else that the word tells us that we need to do. And we know verse 16, it's take the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith, right? Okay, so let's look at all of it. Let me just go there. I'm going to go there in my Bible. Ephesians 6. Now, this is talking about the panoply of all of our armor. And really, when you study it out, it's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. Huh. That's probably why I had us do that communion song. Praise God. Such a picture of who he is for us, what he's done for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, I know it's like every time I see this word, I want to explain what it is. Wiles, W-I-L-E, just like the wily coyote, right? A wile is a clever trick used to lure someone. See, the devil, okay, the, okay let's go here. All right, Holy Spirit. The devil has no spiritual perception, right? The Bible says that he is limited to that which is common to man. So the only thing the devil can do is, hear, is listen to you and watch you see your reaction, see your responses, and hear what you say. And then you arm him. See, remember where it says, I have given you power 
right? To tread on serpent, Luke 10, 19, right? I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any, mean may, by any means may harm you, right? When you look at that, okay, I have given you power. That first word power, that is power. God has given us power. And that second word power, when you translate it, is ability. It's ability. It's not power. It's ability. And we are the ones that give the enemy the ability that he has. He's under our feet. He's defeated. Hallelujah. Jesus made a show of him openly, right? Triumphing over him. Far above. Hallelujah. All principalities and powers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he is defeated. Glory to God. We need to keep that mindset. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, that's important you know that too. Because every time, right? The devil uses people. He uses circumstances, yes, but we got to remember that he uses people too, right? And so when you're, when you're facing something and, and it's a person, recognize that it's not that person, right? It's whatever is propelling and pushing that person because our battle, we, we, we're not in a flesh and blood battle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We live in this flesh and blood world, but God has given us a weaponry that's spiritual, above everything that's natural. Glory to God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, he begins to go through it, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. But then he says this, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. What you got to understand is you fashion your shield. No one else can fashion it for you. You fashion your shield. Glory to God. Let's, um, and when I talk about the shield, I think there's a misconception really about what the shield is because I think people visualize that it's a Roman shield that the soldier held out in front of him, right, to protect him, you know, from the enemy. But really, <laughs> we begin to get an awesome picture by the very first thing that God said to Abram in Genesis 15:1. He appears to Abram, right? Now, we got, you got to just think of the heart of God, right? Because, you know, Adam and Eve had committed high treason, right? They had taken the thoughts of the enemy, right? And laid down their privileges and, and all that they had been given by God, right? But God didn't stop there because we know that God was still in pursuit of man. And we know that he found a man, Enoch, right? Noah's, what, great-grandfather, right? He found Enoch, and the Bible says that he was so pleased with his relationship with Enoch, right? Because it says Enoch pleased him, so he must have been a man of faith, right? Hallelujah. He, he, one of the ones that was translated, right? Enoch didn't even see death. Hallelujah. It says, and Enoch was not, right? Hallelujah. And then he found um, Elisha, right? And he took Elisha up. Praise the Lord. Can you see, when you look at the heart of God, you see he has always been in pursuit of man. Even when man chose to reject God, God was still pursuing man. And then we find Noah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so here we find Abram, right? Because God is looking for a man that he can cut covenant. He's looking for a way that he can begin to open the door for Jesus to come. Hallelujah. Because he had a plan. He had a plan. Glory to God. And so what he says there, he says, Abram... Um, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy great reward. I, he, was, he was beginning to, 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 he wanted to reveal to Abram who he was. you got to think about even where Abram was at, because Abram was living in the middle of, of idolatry. Ab Abram didn't even know anything about God, right? I mean, he worshipped the moon, right? And so for God to begin to to reveal himself um, to Abram, hallelujah, and he was going to begin to choose covenant, which was awesome because it was the very thing that he knew would produce faith in Abram because Abram didn't know God, but he knew covenant. And so God chose the very thing that would produce faith in Abram, and he chose covenant. And so he says, Abram, I'm your shield, hallelujah, I'm your shield and your great reward. Psalm 91.4 says, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler, buckler, protector, 
He's our shield and our protector. Psalm 59, 11 calls the Lord our shield. Psalm 28, 7 says the Lord is my strength and my shield. Psalm 119, 114 reveals the Lord is both our hiding place and our shield. Hallelujah. You're beginning to get the picture. Hallelujah. It is not just a Roman, right? Shield you stick out in front of you. Oh, it's so much more. It's the person of Jesus. It's the person of Jesus. He's our shield. He's our protector. That's so much more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll go back over. Genesis 15.1, Psalms 91.4, Psalms 59.11, Psalms 28.7, Psalms 119.114. Praise the Lord. And one of the keys to fashioning your shield is developing faith in God's word, right? Faith is resident in the word. The word is God-breathed, right? John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, right? Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then the next verse says the same. What does verse 2 say? I think it says the same, right? The same. Let's, I can go to it. Can you do verse 2, please? Or I can go there. He was present originally with God for the same, the same, the same. He and his word, the same, was in the beginning with God. So see, one of the first things in fashioning your shield, again, is your faith in the word of God. You cannot separate God and his word. They're one. Praise God. Um, and we need to understand that when he released his word, he released himself in his word. So when you think about that, every word of God contains all the ability of God himself because he released himself, praise God, in his spoken word. Proverbs 30 verse 5 says this, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. You see, what causes that shield to begin to work is the trust factor, is the trust factor. Think about it in, just in the natural, right, where trust is concerned. You really don't trust who you don't know. It's not until you begin to develop that relationship and you know, hey, this is a person of their word. When they say they're going to be there at 8 o'clock, they're always there at 8 o'clock. When they say they're going to do this, they're, they always show up and they always do it. You begin to develop that trust, and it's the same with the Word of God. That's how we begin to develop in our trust with Him. Praise God. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Two valuable truths right here. One is that God and His Word are one. What God is, the Word is. And what the Word is, God is. You cannot separate the two. Secondly, God is your shield through His pure Word. Knowing about it's not enough, you must take his word into your spirit to be strong in faith. Hallelujah. It's not just an overnight thing. It, there is a developing. Your faith develops. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. These are faith components. I'm just going to show you this. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. And of course, this is talking about wisdom. And remember, I said God is... this. His word is filled with wisdom for us on how to build our lives. Hallelujah. And so this is talking about wisdom. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if you cry after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, if you search or seek for her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures... See, that's like that man that Pastor was talking about, right, in the book of John, that dug deep. He dug deep, and he built his foundation. And because he did that, when the storms of life happened, he could not be shaken. Hallelujah. Remember that's what he was saying about the pilot with the instruments and everything? Do you remember that illustration that Pastor gave on Sunday, right? He said the one thing that mostly they trained for was for something bad to happen. They trained for that, for the instruments to go out and, and, and all these things, right, to happen. They trained and trained and trained for that so that they became so acquainted with the equipment and the procedures and the process so that when the challenge happened, they knew exactly what to do. And he, 
equated it to our life of faith. It's the same thing with us, praise the Lord. We are to become so acquainted with this word that when the circumstances and challenges of life happen, we already know what to do, praise the Lord. And we can respond, hallelujah, instead of react. Glory to God, hallelujah. So, lost my place, yeah. Mm-hmm. Two six, I was going there. Then shalt thou... Yes, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. The three components to faith, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Hallelujah. Wisdom. Well, let's go with knowledge first. Knowledge. Knowledge. We get the knowledge of God's word, right? Wisdom is the application of that knowledge. And the understanding is is that you have settled it in your heart that this is truth, this is it. You understand the value of this word. That's the three components, really, to faith. Hallelujah. We gain the knowledge through the word of God. We begin to get the wisdom. As we begin to walk out the knowledge we have, we're walking in wisdom. Wisdom is the application of the knowledge you know. And then you get to the place of understanding where you've just settled it within yourself. You understand that this is the answer, and there's, there's nothing out here that's the answer. I've already got the answer. Praise God. Because we, Okay, so let me. I need to go further with this. So Matthew 13, right? I mean, you can look Matthew 13, Mark 4, uh, Luke 8. All those places are where it talks about the word of God is seed, okay? All those places in scripture. When you look at it, it says, for the one that doesn't understand, it talks about not understanding. And you just go and, this isn't in my notes, so just go instead. This is for somebody. It says, for the one that doesn't understand, okay? When you look at that, it's not talking about conceptual understanding. It's really there talking about an understanding of the value, right? That you value this. And because you do, you take that word and you plant it in the good soil. And you, it now produces for you. Because remember, it gives four grounds, four different grounds there, right? It didn't produce on three. There was nothing wrong with the word. It all had to do with the ground, right? And it was the fourth ground that it finally produced for. And that was the one of understanding. Glory to God. Because again, if you never value the word of God as your answer, if that's not the source uh, for the solution of wherever you're at in life, there will always be something else vying for and contending for the throne of your heart. There will always be something else that you go for first, right? Because you're comfortable. It's what you've always done, right? But I'm telling you, there's something more. And I'm telling you, you settle it within yourself that this is the answer and this is truth. Praise God. And it works. He is a shield to the one who trusts in him. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says this, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that send out roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries. Praise God. Remember we talked about that, I think it was last service, in the book of Matthew, right? With our mindset and where worry was concerned. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Now, think about that because that scripture parallels Psalm 1, right? Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. See, again, that's why I said those that you have companionship with, those that, you're, those that don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, there is all kinds of counsel that the world will give you. But the Bible says that there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Hallelujah. It's in God's counsel. Hallelujah. You want to attain, the Bible says, attain to sound counsel and you will steer your course rightly. Praise God. I want to steer my course rightly. I want to attain to sound counsel. Praise the Lord. And I'm not going to find it in the world. I'm going to find it in him. The one who is tried and true, the one who is the rock of all ages, whose advice has never changed for centuries and thousands and thousands of years, it can be relied upon, stood upon, 
Hallelujah. Because all the thoughts and, and ideologies and what the world thinks is right or wrong changes from generation to generation. Well, now this is right. Well, now this is right. Well, now we think you should do this. Well, now you should rear your children this way. No, 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 no. I'm going to go to the one who knows. Hallelujah. Because this has never changed. Hallelujah. And God's already told me about the four contemplated times that I go and begin to talk to my children, right, about the word of God. Because what I want to do is begin to plant it for the next generation. And God knew that. And because he knew that, he said, listen to me. You talk about my word. You talk about my goodness. Right? The, the four times, right, when your children wake up in the morning, when they sit around the house, when they go about their way, and when they lie down at night. Wow. Wow. And I've really taken that to heart. It seems like my car, we have a lot of good conversations in the car because they're confined, right, to that space. And the nee-nee-nee-nee starts happening. It just opens up. All right, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about some things. Like this, la this, anyways, this last argument was all about um, family, right? And about, you know, how much more time we have with each other and that we value each other and you value family and you value your relationships anyways. And so, and, and talked about what God says about family and, 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 and loving each other and speaking out of love anyways. So what I'm saying is God knows what he's doing, right? His counsel is right counsel. Glory to God. And so that's part of us attaining to the wisdom of God, knowing that I'm, I'm building my house the right way by taking those contemplated times to talk about the word. Hallelujah. And you know, we should take that same for ourselves. We should be meditating on the words at all those times throughout the day for ourselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in Jeremiah 17, it parallels, right? Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord meaning the word of the Lord, right? And in his word does he meditate day and night. This is the one who will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf will not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. So truly what it's saying here is that for the one who puts their trust in the Lord, right, and meditates on his word, that person will be fruitful and productive even when the circumstances around them are falling apart. Because it's saying, even in the middle of drought, they'll be fruitful. They'll be productive. Praise God. And you got to understand, Jeremiah was living in a time where people were worshiping idols. They were not planting their roots in the living God. But even Jeremiah knew, with the impending enemy that was going to come and, and take over Israel, he knew that he would be kept fresh and alive in God. And so even though there was a drought around him, there was never a drought in him. And that should, always, that should be us, a picture of us. Marilyn Hickey, oh, love her. If you don't know who Marilyn Hickey is, Google Marilyn Hickey. Um, but that woman, I have heard, I've listened to that woman, and she, has just, she is filled with the word. She is filled with the word. She can just, just, the word just comes out of her. And scripture after scripture after scripture. Pray, and she can just stand there and, and quote the scripture. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyways, so Marilyn Hickey, she... Um, shared a testimony of a time in her life where the circumstances were very overwhelming. And she said she went and she was talking with the Lord, you know, and she said literally she felt like running away and changing her name. And this is was God's response to her, to her. The Lord answered her and said, this is not the time of isolation. This is the time for insulation with the word of God, with the word. He said, this is not because see, and you got to realize that's, that's how the enemy works, right? Because he begins to put pressure, right? Or a circumstance or something. And you begin to feel like, you know, you just want to go away and you just want to isolate, right? And, and that's, that's the exact tool of the enemy to get you to run away from what is your solution, right? Instead of running into the church, that, right? That is your solution, right? Not isolating. And so the Lord spoke to her and said, this is not a time for isolation. This is a time for insulation with the word. And then she said this, a right heart can overcome bad circumstances. A right heart can overcome bad circumstances. She insulated, and I liked how she put this, she insulated her thought life by meditating on his word and her circumstances became fruitful. I like that. She insulated her thought life. 
The only way we do that is by the word. Insulate our thought life, right? Hallelujah. And, and that's, but we talked about this. <sighs> a mindset. Remember we talked about this in the book of Romans, right? Um, um, the mind of, there's a mind of the flesh and there's a mind of the spirit, right? And, and uh, you know, a lot of people may look at that as Christianese, but really you can boil it down and it's very, very simple. A mind set after the flesh or a mind set after the spirit. And really what that is, is you set your mind to what the word says before the situation ever happens, right? If it's where my husband is concerned, before I ever have pressure in my marriage, I have already set my mind to what the word says I'm supposed to do where my marriage is concerned, so that when that happens, I, I've already got the mindset. My mind is set. I've insulated my thought life with the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So she said a right heart can overcome bad circumstances. You know, pastor's been, we've been hearing this scripture a lot, Isaiah 26, 3 in particular. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Hallelujah. A disciplined mind produces a disciplined life, which yields a reward. A disciplined mind, right, produces a disciplined life, which yields a great reward. Hallelujah. When our soul wants to worry and worry and worry, and then the pressure comes on and we, we, we have that temptation to react in fear, there's a way that we can combat that. And it's by insulating our thought, right? Our mind, by insulating our minds with the word of God. Hallelujah. Marilyn said that she memorized certain chapters of the Bible. Chapters of the Bible. She said, yeah, oh, let me, you know what? I want to actually, I want to read this particular thing out of, if you've not, Marilyn Hickey has, um, has a series, um, Seeing Jesus. Hallelujah. When you begin to look into the word, Jesus, it's, it's all Jesus. It's all a beautiful picture of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even in particular, when you look at the book of Isaiah, right? I mean, it's divided into as many chapters that are in the beginning of Isaiah to the second half of Isaiah is the same as the, um, the Bible itself, praise God. And it's all a picture of Jesus right there. And so anyways, um, I've enjoyed um, this study. She shares something in here, which I just thought was so good. She says, I've found that oftentimes I have had to discipline my mind severely. When my soul wanted to worry and worry and worry, my mind would react with fear. To combat this, I began to memorize certain chapters of the Bible. I memorized the book of James. Another time, I memorized the book of Matthew. Even another time, I memorized the book of Proverbs. It took me about nine months, but to this day, I can quote all 31 chapters of Proverbs. Awesome. Those are some of the sweetest, richest times in my life because I had my mind so filled with the word. I would go over the scriptures early in the morning, which I thought this was interesting that she said this too. I would um, go over the scriptures early in the morning, again at noon, and one time before I went to sleep. My mind became so saturated with the word that I maintained tremendous peace. Remember, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And having the word of God in your heart gives the Holy Spirit, this is so important, gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to bring it to your mind at other times when you need peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. That's so good. And remember, your tongue is attached to the contents of your heart. Out of your heart comes the response to every situation you will ever have in life. And as you draw out of those contents with your heart, you guide your life towards life or towards death. Um, the Bible says, let's see, um, Proverbs 16, 23, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth. <laughs> That's good. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. Hallelujah. The wisdom of God can teach our mouth how we should respond. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Proverbs 15, 23, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Hallelujah. 
So tonight, what I want to focus on is, first of all, us becoming well-advised through the Word of God. We take our counsel from His Word, praise God. That's where our wisdom comes from. Fashioning our shield of faith, because no one else can do it for you, we fashion our shield and speak life. Speak life. I want to give this, I read this probably about a year ago or even more, but this is important for us. It says, children's lives are largely made up of words, the words of their parents and those whom they love and admire. A mother can fill her boy's heart with zeal for an education and for a position in life, or she can, with words, destroy the finest spirit that that was ever given to a home. The children are word made, and that's not just for children. What do I mean? Their lives are made up of words of their parents and loved ones. The wife little appreciates the power of words on her husband's life. When he loses his job, she, she could scold him and tell him that he's no good. He was whipped before he came home, but he would then be doubly whipped. Instead, she puts her arms around him and says, that's all right, dear. You'll get a better position. You're worthy of a better job anyway. He goes out the next morning thrilled by the touch of her lips, and her words have filled him with courage courage and confidence. He leaves her heart filled with joy and gladness, and she says, what a man God gave me. And he says, what a woman you gave me, Lord. They have learned the secret of words. A few devastating words could have filled his mind with confusion, his heart with pain, and his eyes with tears. Words give heartache, and words give strength and comfort and faith. Let's be cautious of the words we use. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm actually going to ask Samara if she would come up. I wanted her to, um, and this song was also on my heart for us tonight, um, just before we close out. Yeah. Um, Brad, is there a way that we can do, just give her this. What's that? Microphone on the front row. That one here that Linda has? Apologize, I'm putting you on the spot. Change up. Test. I don't know. Is that it, Brad? Let me get away from her. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wanted her to sing, Turn turn Our Eyes on Jesus. That would be good. Awesome. Oh, soul, are you weak and troubled? darkness you see there's light for a look at the savior and life more abundant and free turn your eyes upon jesus look
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to close us in prayer. Father, we're so grateful. And Lord, we turn our eyes upon you. And Father, in light of you, everything else pales. Father, thank you that you are the answer to every circumstance and situation in life. And Father, I thank you that through the knowledge of who you are in your word, Lord, that there is not one thing in life that's unchangeable, Lord. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for depositing faith in each and every one of us, Lord. Hallelujah. And I take this opportunity to just speak peace over every household in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare household salvation in the name of Jesus. I call for every wayward child, every wayward family member to come back in the name of Jesus. Running to you, Lord, knowing that you are the answer. Hallelujah. Just as the prodigal son came to his senses right in the middle of his mess. Father, we thank you that it's you that can reach right down into the middle of any person's mess and pull them out. So, Lord, we lay hold of that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we come to you and we learn your ways, Lord. And when we do, you cause us to live light and free. Hallelujah. So I speak to every weight. Every weighty thing I declare lifted in the name of Jesus for freedom from anxiety and fear and all torment that your perfected love, Lord, your perfect love is at work. And we rest in that love, Lord. We rest in that love because you love us, because you care for us. Your word says that we can be carefree because you care for us. So we give every care to you, Lord. And Father, we'll do our part. We're de we'll declare the truth of your word, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God, we have coffee made in the back, which looks like you might want to hang out and have some coffee. <laughs> Say it, air the rain. Praise God. Um, hang out just one second, though, because we, we went around the room, and, we gave, and the ladies up front here um, gave their names and how long they've been coming to the church, which is awesome, because the church um, has been for 15 years. We started out in the plaza, and... and you know, we're able to get the building and move into the building. And so, you know, 14 years and 13 years and 12 years and 11 years and some, you know, two years and a year and a half. And so praise God. That's so awesome to hear. Um, but I'm going to get, um, Angel, could you introduce yourself and just say how long you've been a part of the church? Yeah, praise God. Praise God. And Michaela. Michaela was the first baby that Pastor Aaron dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Sasha was three years old, I think, when she, um, when she first started coming, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's been awesome. And Heidi, well, that's Heidi. <laughs> How long do you think you guys have been coming? Okay, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Dakota? How cool is that? That's so cool. Praise God. And Maria? Yeah? 
But we dedicated all Maria's, Maria's kids. Yeah, yeah, praise God. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. And Stephanie and Eileen. Yeah, yeah. Really? Praise God. Good. To Michaela's dedication. Praise God. So Stephanie and Eileen. And what's your name? What is it? Lana. Lana. Praise God, Lana. Are you friends with Steph? Ah, just a little love, a little bit. <laughs> oh, praise God. I'm glad you're here, Lana. That's awesome. Praise God. Veronica? And then that's Veronica. Ten. Ten. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's her Aunt Candy. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Roxana? Yeah? Praise God. Yeah, so 15 years? Yeah. Praise God. Miss Carly, don't, don't drink yet. <laughs> Busted. Yeah? 13 years. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Woo, 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 woo. All right, young lady, your turn. Yeah? Praise God. Yeah? <laughs> You're getting to the year. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. All right. Well, we have coffee and... Angel, what did you make? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the CrossFitters say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise God. All right. You got just fellowship, enjoy some coffee and, and whatever angel.